Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another simple fusion tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about mirroring. It's a very powerful tool in fusion and I want to show you the basics on how to use it. There's definitely two ways I think that it can really help you out and we'll demonstrate those today. If you like my fusion tutorials, check out my Patreon. I have about seven or eight episodes of designing a 3D printer from scratch. They're really great tutorials on getting you started on how to use Fusion. So let's go ahead here and let's do some mirroring. So I actually have my view set to the top here and we're going to do a simple rectangle. So what I'm gonna do here is I, I just hit R on my keyboard and I clicked on my plane and I went into sketch mode. So we're sketching here on the top view in Fusion. So if we go up here under sketch and actually go create center rectangle, I'm going to make just a square. And we're doing this in the origin of our sketch. So right in the middle point here. And I'll show you a bunch of different um, tools on how to actually mirror something that's not on the origin. But for now, we're going to just do some origin sketching. So I have my um, square here. It doesn't really matter what size it is. And we are going to extrude this up into a solid. So I'm just clicking on my sketch. I pressed E and I'm extruding that 60 millimeters. So we have this nice shape right now. So let's say, for instance, I want to start putting some holes on the side of this cube. So if I go to the right side here, I click on my, my surface, I press C, because I want to make a circle. And let's say I want to do a 20 millimeter circle, and I want to cut that into my cube, let's just say five millimeters. So we're just going to cut that into the cube by five millimeters. Now, we can go back onto the left hand side and do that same circle, 20 millimeters, cut it into the cube, or we can mirror it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna choose these surfaces and I'm gonna go up to create mirror. And what I wanna do is I've chosen my objects that I wanna mirror. I need to select a mirror plane. So whether this is like left, right, up, down, whatever, we want to actually mirror on our, on the other plane. So my body's in the way. I can actually just go ahead and hide this. We'll click on this uh, plane here, bring our body back, and you can see we have our outline of our mirror. And there we go. We've mirrored it across to the other side of the part. And this can save a bunch of time, especially if you have a lot of different surfaces or objects or, or um, changes you've made to one side. You can just mirror them across, right? Same thing goes for the top here. If I made a cutout, let's say, I made a 10 millimeter cutout in the corner of this. Let's make this uh, cut out. I'm just extruding it through my solid here. So I have this 10 millimeter cutout. I want to mirror this across. I can simply just click on the cutout surface, go create mirror. We're going to select our mirror plane again. We'll hide the body just so we can get access to our selection there. Put the body back and click OK. And you can see we mirrored that on. Now, we can click both of these surfaces now. So I, I held control on my keyboard and I clicked both surfaces. We can create a mirror in the other direction now. Let's hide our body, select our um, orientation that we want to mirror and click OK. And you can now see how easily we did four of these 10 millimeter cutouts. Now, what I think the best part about CAD is, you can do this many different ways. We could have done a sketch on the top, 
you know, did some dimensions and things like that to get to the sketch how we wanted it. So for instance, if I did a very simple sketch like we did before, this is not gonna be the same, but I'm just using the dimension option here. So we made our, our circle, a circle here that's 10 millimeters away from the edges, right? And we could do the same thing on the other side, right? We can do this all via a sketch instead of a, mirror. Now, whichever way you prefer, that's totally fine. Again, being a hobbyist, this doesn't have to be perfect. The sketch way is probably the best way as you can edit this afterwards. However, it's not that big of a deal in the end. Um, use whatever way you prefer. But as you can see here, this takes more steps, absolutely. Um, it is editable though, so we can change these later on because now we have a sketch with some constraints on it. So now we have our 10 millimeter cutouts, just like we did before using mirror mode. And again, the beauty of this is we can edit our sketch and I could change this and say, actually, I want this to be 15 and we can finish that. Now we've moved, we can move this. However, if you mirrored it and you don't have a sketch, we can still move this. So it's not the end of the world if you don't have a sketch. You can manipulate fusion very easy without sketches. Like I said in my previous videos, I don't use sketches very often. I will, you know, kind of use the simplest method, which would be create a hole, mirror it across a couple times, and I'm done, right? Because like I said, we can still move these around, and this will work just fine for us if it's not correct. So choose the method that you prefer. They're both great ways. The other thing that I want to do is I want to show off Another way you can mirror something. All right, so another way you can mirror something is, let's say I am making a really complicated object and it is gonna be very complex to model this. I may choose to model just one side of the actual uh, model and mirror it over. For instance, if I was making a complex object like this, Let's just say we're making some crazy organic object here. I just wanna check this, doesn't really matter. So we have this crazy object. We're gonna extrude it like this. And then let's say we came in here and again, we were working on this for a very long time doing all sorts of modifications you know, I want to cut out here. And I want to you know, put some holes down the middle here like this. And now I say, okay, I'm ready now to create the other side of this. Again, we can create a mirror. We are gonna select this entire object in this case, and I'm gonna select my mirror plane. Again, I'm going to just hide the body so that we can get access to our mirror plane. And now we can choose an operation. We can join the two halves, or we can just make this new this side a new body. Now when doing this, generally I recommend doing a new body in case like you forgot something, let's say. The big disadvantage of this is you want this side to be 100% complete before you mirror it across. Because if you found out, oh, I forgot, I needed to do another, you know, cutout right here, you're gonna have to do that cutout on the other side, right? So in this scenario, I could go ahead and 
remove this body and just now mirror it again. So I don't, I generally won't combine my two mirrors into one until later. So for instance, let's do another mirror and update this. Again, we're gonna choose new body. If I'm happy with this part, I can now just do a combine. So we can combine these two parts together afterwards. And there we go, we have our part. So again, mirroring is very, very powerful. You can use it in many different ways. Something I wanna show you now though is a mirror where we don't have that center origin, right? So if I bring up our origin here, our origin's actually at the front of the part. So what happens if I want to mirror something across from the front of this to the back of this? Let's try this. So let's hide our origin here. So let's say I want to make a rectangular cutout on the front of this, let's say. So we do our sketch, we're gonna hit E, and we're gonna extrude this by negative five millimeters to the inside. I go ahead and grab my faces by holding control and clicking on them. And let's mirror these across. So let's create a mirror. If I click my mirror plane, look what happens here. Because it's mirroring based on the origin, this is not gonna work. I want this to be at the back of my part. So what we can do now, and what's very powerful, is we can create new construction planes. Probably the most common one you're gonna use is a mid-plane. So I'm gonna select a mid-plane. And what this wants is it wants two surfaces, essentially. So I'm gonna choose this surface here and this surface on the back. And we can see it's automatically making us a construction plane right in the middle that we can now use for mirroring. So if I click on my surfaces, and I go create mirror, our mirror plane can now be this construction surface that we've made. And now you can see we've mirrored it across correctly. You of course can hide this construction plane if you want to. And that is a very, very powerful way to actually do mirroring on objects that might not be in the center or might not have a center origin. You can make a construction plane in the middle very easily. And I use this all the time when making 3D printers. So in this very quick tutorial, you can see how powerful mirroring is, how useful it is, and how many different ways you can use mirroring. So I hope this encourages more of you to just dive into Fusion 360, dive into CAD, start learning, start playing around, in my opinion, there's no right way to do this. Find the way that you prefer and just have fun. Again, if you'd like more tutorials, definitely check out my Patreon. I have a lot of great tutorials on there and I'll catch you all next time.